Well, this is Africa. This is the place where everything started. And it's, it's a multiracial society. Uh, and South Africa is a world in one country, as they say. And it, it's marvelous. It's, it's a great place to be. It has scenic beauty. It has all sorts of racial and ethnic groups. Uh, I, I remember walking up this mountain <laughs> from the uh, university house up here to school every day, and then I'd turn around and I'd see this view, and I'd think, ah, it's well worth the walk. So the exposure in the international uh, and, uh, environment, uh, the cultural experience with the Irish uh, phenomenal, I think just also a network uh, that has got people with a common belief of really giving back, um, and, and giving back in terms of education, in terms of... Uh, you know, anything that other people may need that they may not necessarily be able to get uh, under the circumstances or the limited resources that they have. Yeah, so personally that exposure, the common passion um, and, uh, and, and, and the same belief uh, to give back that, uh, that is giving me the opportunity to, to share in that platform. Meeting President Mary McAleese was quite a privilege. Um, the final build up towards uh, the conference uh, in, in Dublin um, where basically uh, the Irish uh, different clubs, uh, Rotary clubs, they're there to, uh, to share their stories and what they're doing and, and also just mobilizing this whole belief about um, you know, projects around, for example, polio eradication, etc. So just really igniting. Um, we had a radio interview and a television interview uh, with one of the channels uh, in, in, in Ireland. But I think, you know, as a South African, uh, what I mentioned it earlier at, in, my, in my talk, just the, the, the common grounds with related to uh, the history within Ireland and within, uh, within, within South Africa. You know, driven by different things, but the same experience was the same and how they, they actually are addressing those was really fantastic because we managed to actually, I, I believe there's still something that we can learn from them that can actually uh, influence South Africa in the same way and largely it's around education. So, the, and the food, fantastic. I didn't know that potatoes could come in so many forms. Um, yeah, so now I know. I've, I've, I've brought back some of the recipes uh, that I managed to show off ever since coming back. UCT has a wonderful political science department. Um, that was number one on my list. The university is very well ranked internationally. And this is a hot spot for young people to come to because Cape Town offers everything there is under the sun to do. I heard a statistic that less than 8% of South African schools have an actual public library available for their use. And so I teamed up with the Western Department of Education Foundation and with Rotary International to get a library started at a West Bank school, Hufeg Primary School, in the West Bank area, very close to the airport. The kids there have no access to libraries and they are in desperate need. This library will service over 3,500 students in that area. So we're very excited to have this library in operation, hopefully in the winter of this year. I've been here for six months and the best experiences are just meeting the local people. Everybody has been incredibly friendly. I've done some amazing things. I've gone shark diving and paragliding. Uh, I think I've done everything there is to do, but the local people are absolutely great um, and have been a real value to me in my search for the library project. When I became an ambassadorial scholar for Rotary, I decided that I wanted to go back to, I wanted to go to South Africa. As an American that actually met South Africans at a very young age, um, I think I was about 13 or 14 years old, and I met South Africans that had moved from South Africa to New York City. I had learned to love the country through pictures and their stories and um, customs, uh, foods, and I never knew what it was like, but I had decided at a young age that I wanted to know what South Africa was like. Uh, Ten years later, uh, 12 years later, I had the opportunity to become an ambassadorial scholar and the first place that I wanted to go was South Africa and of course one of the premier places um, within South Africa is University of Cape Town. I was doing international health policy and also there's a very strong uh, collaboration with the World Health Organization so I decided to come here. I had an expectation of a kind of a small quaint place and uh, somehow um, I was going to be larger than it, but actually it was larger than I was, and I really loved that.
I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed also the international component. I also enjoyed um, that there were students from not just all over the world, but all over South Africa. And even more importantly, I really loved the fact that University of Cape Town had other connections to other places within South Africa to help me to do my doctoral research. Uh, well, specifically, I, I went to the, what used to be called Northern Province, of Limpopo and did my research there and that's very unusual to have that opportunity to do doctoral research there. I also um, was able to go to uh, Port Elizabeth. Uh, also I was able to go to um, Kimberley, uh, Durban and, and some of the other larger places but I think that no big town was left untouched. Well, as a result of my experience in South Africa, I started a foundation called the Ariel Foundation International. And we specifically work with uh, children in Africa, especially those who have lost parents or loved ones as a result of HIV AIDS. And we call them heart children rather than orphans. So just before coming here, I was actually in Hob House, which is uh, near Free State, near the Kingdom of Lesotho, uh, working with some of our heart children and just being with them, um, caring for them and letting them know that someone outside of their of the people that they know love them and care for them. You see anybody applying for one of these scholarships needs first of all to apply through a Rotary Club. Uh, they uh, need to find one which is convenient to where they live or even convenient to where, where they study. Yeah. Uh, the Rotary Clubs are ready and able to interview them. Um, the unfortunate part of the whole thing is that the amount of money that we have is limited so generally speaking uh, every year we're able to send one scholar on a scholarship overseas competition is heavy the interviewing process first of all uh, starts in the clubs they vet the original um, applicant and then they send it through a to a district committee which does concentrated in interviews lasting the whole day each one about an hour and uh, the, out of that a selection is made and as I say unfortunately it's only one the quality of people we are getting would justify sending a lot more people on the scholarship but we don't have the money for that uh, uh, which is important the scholarship is actually called a, a, an ambassadorial scholarship so there's a strong ambassadorial slant to it what does that mean it means that the person needs to bring their culture to their host uh, uh, university and to their host city and also take from the local culture something that they can give back in their own cities when they go back to Europe or the United States or Australasia or Asia.